Hey guys, in this video, the lovely team is going to be looking at Robert Dudley, the first Earl of Leicester, and his influence in Elizabethan society. Now, history has lots of topics, lots of dates, lots of facts that you need to remember and get in there, so you can pull them out of your brain when you are in the exam. To help you with your vision over my website, there are loads of multiple choice questions just waiting for you. Robert Dudley was born in 1532 to John Dudley, the Duke of Northumberland, and his wife Jane. Edward Dudley, the grandfather of Robert, had been a senior advisor to Henry VII and had been executed for treason, as was not unusual with the touchy Henry, by Henry VIII in 1510. Like many figures of nobility or royalty in the age, Dudley was educated by private tutors, some of whom overlapped and also educated the young Elizabeth I. Dudley had a talent for languages and the written word, which was important for boys of the age. However, to his tutor's widespread dismay, he preferred mathematics. Dudley was present at the courts of Henry VIII and Edward VI, and in those, he learned the arts of politics and government, as well as, one can presume, interpersonal skills. Reports from the time indicate that Dudley had a relatively happy home life as an infant, something which was by no means guaranteed deed for children of the age, regardless of their standing or nobility. His parents were famed for the care and love and their doting on their 13 children. In 1549, Robert Dudley participated in the violent putting down of Ket's Rebellion. In doing this, he met the woman who would become his future wife, Amy Robsart. After the death of Edward VI in 1553, the Duke of Northumberland attempted to transfer the crown to Lady Jane Grey to ensure a Protestant on the throne. However, as we've seen, the coming to power was done by the new opposing Catholic, Mary I. Dudley was involved in military campaigns against the new Queen Mary. However, in King's Lynn, he was seized by the townspeople who feared the wrath of the new Queen he was imprisoned in the Tower of London, as was normal for the age, and sentenced to death, along with his, his father and four brothers. Dudley's stay in the Tower of London overlapped to an extent with that of Elizabeth, who would become Elizabeth I. This started a closed bond of shared trust between the two. After pleas to the incoming Spanish nobles and Philip I himself, Dudley was eventually released along with those brothers who had survived and not been executed. From a young age, therefore, Robert Dudley was clearly and obviously among Elizabeth's close circle. When, he, when she became queen, this did not change. His military actions in support of Protestantism and his imprisonment in the Tower of London have proven his loyalty to both Protestantism in general and her in particular. Dudley was physically present and witnessed the transfer of power as nobles and courtiers from across England came to swear allegiance to the new queen. On the same day as these nobles came to Hatfield House to swear allegiance to Elizabeth, Dudley became master of the horse, a position where he oversaw the royal stables and horses, and a position which suited his skills. He was a famed horseman. This position, master of the horse, also gave him a place in the court around the new queen Elizabeth. In 1559, it became clear that Dudley was central to the government. He was elected a Knight of the Garter, and visitors to court remarked on his closeness to the Queen. One gave this quote, Lord Robert has come so much into favour that he does whatever he likes with affairs, and it is even said that Her Majesty visits him in his chamber day and night. To what extent their closeness was physical can only be speculated at, but then and now there have been many rumours. By 1559, a year or two after Queen Elizabeth coming to power, it had already been noted by many people that Robert Dudley never left the Queen's side, but his wife Amy was rarely present at court. A year later, in 1560, Robert Dudley's wife Amy was found dead at her house near Oxford after apparently falling down the stairs. Even then, this would have been a rare occurrence, although possible, and it therefore constituted suspicious circumstances. Most historians, however, looking back, do consider murder to have been unlikely. Falling down the stairs was possible, especially with the design of Elizabethan staircases, and it would be consistent with her wounds and injuries found when she was examined. So it does appear that murder was not the case. In 1562, Elizabeth fell ill with smallpox, a dreaded disease of the age, which left people disfigured and killed many. Elizabeth made him protector of the realm, effectively regent while she was incapacitated. He also received a large salary for this role, along with the power and prestige that came with it. 
However, Dudley was now without a wife. Elizabeth attempted to marry him off to Mary, Queen of Scots, to limit the power of that potential rival. Rumours began very quickly, however, that Dudley could potentially have been a suitor to Elizabeth herself. But by 1564, as attention and Elizabeth herself moved on, it became increasingly clear that this was unlikely. As we've seen, therefore, Robert Dudley quickly became a very central and indeed dominant figure at the court of Elizabeth I right from her taking power. He was described, with some raising of eyebrows and innuendo, as a male favourite to a virgin queen and found himself in a very unusual situation. His apartments and lodgings at court were adjacent to those of Elizabeth herself. There was a downside to this, however, for him. Dudley suffered from the famous possessiveness and jealousy of the young queen, and was hardly allowed to leave her side or leave her at all. Dudley was therefore, in many ways, an unofficial consort. He was with the queen on official functions and state engagements, and indeed sometimes he even acted in place of the queen if she was unable to attend. In 1587, Dudley was made Lord Steward. This made him effectively responsible for the actual day-to-day -day running of the royal household itself. This was widely noted, and he was mocked for trying to economise and save money in the role. In 1588, as the Spanish Armada literally approached, Robert Dudley was made Lieutenant and Captain General of the Queen's Armies and Companies, a very senior military position. He was instrumental in repelling the Spanish Armada, for which he gained wide acclaim and was given the special honour of dining with the Queen, which was highly unusual in the age. On his way to his house in Oxford in 1588, Dudley died. As one would expect with incomplete records and limited medical expertise in the day, his cause of death is disputed and uncertain. Various sources claim various things, such as stomach ulcers, stroke or malaria. Malaria does seem unlikely, but it is possible that mosquitoes had come over with the Spanish. Dudley has been evaluated in various ways by historians. Most agree, however, that he was a favourable figure. He was a patron of the arts and literature and a central figure at court. However, as one may expect from his life, his precise relationship with Elizabeth has been a matter since the era of dispute and rumour. Ouch! This is when somebody is, I've had explained scratches.